It is the 12th of March 2018 and this is the definitive story of what you are, what we are. Just because um, I've been learning quite a lot and bits in this video and that video um, and there's also one piece of information which I meant to talk about in my last video but uh, didn't remember to do so. So I just want to get it all out because I'm seeing people on YouTube who are uh, doing really well in a sense of feeling the truth but you know they'll feel a little bit and then make a a huge assumption for example someone may have felt the feeling of being at one with the one love and that that's in a sense how we are all sustained by one force but that doesn't mean we are all just the same thing and eventually our individuality will diminish into nothing. We will continue to grow. There's a moody blues song, lyrics, <laughs> which escape me now. <laughs> um, saying how we'll always continue to grow, and I can't remember the wording. So, don't make assumptions like there isn't you don't have a mother and father God that created you and love you and should be your guide, um, should be your teacher. If you start assuming that that doesn't exist, well, you're losing a big part of it. Right. <coughs> <coughs> So, we'll say in the beginning, in the beginning of us, in the beginning of everyone on this planet, every human on this planet, and every human who's ever lived. And when I say human, I mean this particular type of humanoid, where the first pair were created roughly 6,000 years ago. Now we are not just our physical body, so we are more than that. Our physical body is just a vessel. So in the beginning of us, we're going to go way back, 4 billion years perhaps. I can't be precise on that, but the gamma ray bursts that we are detecting, that they claim to be six or seven million light years away, sorry, billion light years away. Their estimation of a light year is but an estimation on the brightness of stars and things like that. So they, they, they may well have those measurements out. But still, it's a very long time. So, So, we are made in the image of our mother and father God. Our mother and father God is this universe that we are, that this earth is in. <clears throat> or at least this is one plane. Now, there seems to be a spiritual plane and there seems to be a feeling plane, a plane where feelings, only feelings, exist. And that is the soul plane, that is the eternal part. But the universe is also, will also always be around, and its functions and purposes are multi 
I would expect. So, and what do we have in this universe? We have a duality in this universe. There's like a, a sun and there's a planet. One emits light and fire, you know, you can't stand on it. And there's a planet which is hard and reflects light. This is the duality we have and it's not good and evil. That's not the duality. The duality is masculine and feminine. So you as a as a one either masculine or feminine, either male or female, you are you will all, you you are an entity in yourself, but coming together with your the one for you so you're a masculine and there's the one female entity that is for you when you two and you two are bonded in that sense but what happens in between you two is a universe the male will be the light and source the source of light in that universe and the female will be the substance in that universe. But that universe is like suspended in a sense by the male half and the female half. And it, it will grow and it will grow with love and this universe that we're in here, our mother and father's universe, has been growing in love and continues to grow and will continue to grow. We'll all keep on growing, wait and see. I think those are the lyrics. <coughs> so, <coughs> four billion years ago, Black holes were being created in every single galaxy in this universe. And that was the physical manifestation of the creation of God's children. 100 billion created then. And each, each of these are made in the image of God. So they've got... So in that black hole is another universe. And so it won't take you long to think, well, God's universe is a black hole inside another higher universe. And God has, our mother and father God has, hundreds, billions of brothers and sisters, just like we do. And so on. It's huge. So when people are talking about, yeah, we're all one. And maybe they're just thinking about us here on planet Earth. But it's much, much bigger than that. Which is why if you start to sort of comprehend and let this information into your beliefs, that you'll understand why I say anyone who's taken on that feeling that we're all one is doing really well is being able to feel that sort of um, enormity in their hearts but it's it's better than they think it's like love has worked out an awesome way for entities to to exist and be happy and love. Like, we couldn't invent a better way. And I'm not a storyteller, I, I'm rubbish at telling stories. But I can figure out what the truth is, and then I can relay that. So, okay, so maybe on your mind thinking, four billion years, what the heck have we been doing? Well, 
I guess God would have been aware of what God's mother and father had done. But God would still want to sort of get to know us all, get to understand us all, start to formulate some sort of plan. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, makes sense to me because of the numbers that God chose seven areas of the universe where there was going to be a living planet. And the planet Earth, four billion years ago, was covered in water. I don't know how cold or hot it was. But it's likely, therefore, that our first experience of some sort of existence would have been as a little sea creature. or even as some sort of bacteria. Now the numbers of these sea creatures could have been, you know, could have been in the entirety. It could have been 28 billion odd. So we could have all been down at the same time executing the genes that we had to do. So we we would have become familiar with the feeling of all of us. Now if there's six other Earth-like places in the universe, the same thing was going on there. And gradually the the life forms became more complicated. So we had a more complicated set of instructions to achieve. And we would have started to experience the sort of emotions that you would experience if someone wanted to eat you. Or if you were found you were hungry and you wanted to eat something else. that sort of competition so we would have had many 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 lives interacting with many many different beings, our brothers and sisters getting to know, we probably all met It is curious that it seems to have taken such a long time but then for an eternal being the beginning growth could be very slow and just things take time and um, if God's got to formulate some sort of plan for how we're all going to interact when we start to become aware of what we truly are. God's going to want to get it right. And I don't think at all that God has tried many times. Now, if you took that theory, you could sort of have some support for it with the um, goings on say 12,000 years ago you know you could you could look at 
some of the evidence we've got and say, well, there was a massive war going on with these ancient peoples and they obliterated each other and that was a failure. So, but I don't think that's the case at all. Um, I just think it took time and and we had to grow and have many many experiences so that became instinctual well, so I'd say we've all been lived a life where we've been a caterpillar and then we've gone into a cocoon and we've come out as a, bat a butterfly complete transformation Now, if we've all experienced that, and God wouldn't do things for no reason, so we've experienced a complete transformation in the physical body. We know how to do stuff like that, if it's written in the genes, if it's to be done. Now, there's a lot written in our human genes that we just don't know about. They called it mostly junk DNA before. Now they're beginning to realise that perhaps none of it is junk whatsoever. So God only knows what's possible. Anyway. So <coughs> we become more and more complicated life forms. We've had many, many, many lives. Interacted with all sorts of different people and included in that we would have no doubt had plenty of times with our own soulmate. And to know the difference that that makes. And maybe it's been a lot with our own soulmate because that would aid the growing of our own universes being with the soulmate so perhaps that's been a, a large bulk of it so then we get nearer and nearer the time we've been you know the the, the oceans receded the earth was expanding land masses came out, we could be more complicated animals, we had the dinosaur era, and for whatever reason that was, to, without them we wouldn't have oil, interestingly. So, that, you got to, you got to accept that, that's had a big part to play in, um, in our, in our history here and now, so that must have been part of the plan as well. So we get to about say 200,000 years ago from now, so we're getting close, you know we've had um, millions of years of living lives as lower creatures. And experiencing all of that and building up our instincts and then we start to see what we call humanoids on the planet Neanderthals and things like that so my theory is at this point we were all taking a rest we weren't existing on the planet and God was trying out different humanoids to see what's possible to see what limitations there are etc and we see evidence for this and all these types of humanoids died out completely even though we see their genes in our own genes, 
the actual species Neanderthals and some of the other ones that have been found on islands and things like that they all got completely wiped out there's no further traces of them so in my mind that's God is using parts of these in our own genes as well so then so then when God is right okay pretty much know what sort of humanoid we're going to have God then makes some and inhabits them to see what in terms of technology is possible so these would be the peoples who built pyramids and stuff in South America, Tiwanaku and, and stuff in um, Indonesia as well and then for some reason they all left and this is pretty much this point 10,500 BC just before a, a, like a little mini ice age they all clear off okay so God has, has basically taken technology to its limits on earth using the materials on earth it all works da, 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 da. it's all tried and tested they clear off to another planet the other side of the moon that's what my theory is and God then creates the first two humans 6,000 years ago and the rest is history. Well, you know, very interesting history and I suppose if I'm doing a definitive story of the truth I'll I'll continue into it. So the first human, the first child of God, let's call him Adam, the first child of God has now a body that is capable of understanding that it's existing, it's alive. So, like I said, countless times, millions of times we've been creatures. We've been existing, we've been sensing with the senses and reacting and being in families and doing all of that and then dying and sort of going back into our incarnate unaware state but now for the first time as a being here on earth able to sort of sit there and think I'm alive I am alive And God knew there'd be trouble. God knew there would be a going away. There had to be. Because it's only through our mistakes that we learn. It's only through feeling negative emotions that we'd know that it was a negative emotion. And no, I don't want to be crying all day. No, I don't want to be feeling like shameful that I'm not a nice person, etc. And so there's there's been a big going away. A going away from love. in order to know that love is the answer in order to know that love is the way so Adam is the father of all of us and 
therefore took on, felt that responsibility once Adam had, in a sense, left God. Because God was invisible. Because God wasn't standing there. No, no matter what it says in the Bible. So Adam had communication with God in the beginning and every single baby on this planet has communication with God in the beginning. And as every single baby on this planet goes through tantrums at the age of two, Adam had something similar. And so therefore was no longer feeling God. Therefore God was not present. Therefore Adam took on the role of God. And Adam wanted to be the boss. Adam didn't want Eve to say no to stuff. Men are, in the solar system, men are the light. We shine the light on truth. We shine the way. We search for the way. Women are the substance, multi-layered and complex and beautiful. And as the earth, they are, they have the ultimate say they get to say yes or no. That's how it should be. But in, the, in our human history, women have been subjugated to a lower level where the men come up with the ideas and they have their own decision, their own veto. They decide what they do and then they do it. So this was the going away from truth and the going away from God. And we went down to the, to the rock, bot, rock bottom, rock bottom, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Revenge was always going to happen. But we started coming up again because we are created, we are love entities. We have a hard core of love right at the core of us that cannot go out. There is a light and it never goes out. And because of God's plan, and God made some interventions, we call these Christs, Messiah, or Son of Man. And it's like, when God made Adam, you know, he made that, whatever the DNA Adam had, Talking about the colour of his hair or anything, but what he was capable of. God has interjected that same DNA, maybe with slight variations, into someone every thousand years. Noah was the next one. Abraham was the next one after that. David the next one after that. Yeshua the next one after that. 
Francis the next one after that and Stephen the one today. And so, by the time we got to Abraham, things were levelling out. And then Yeshua came along, things were coming back. Coming back towards the truth. Coming back towards God. And more and more and more people on the planet, all the time. And this planet will be capable of holding every, every soul can have a being existing on this planet. And that will happen. And we're in a very interesting time. And people are going to be becoming aware of the truth. People coming from all different directions all will be gradually getting closer and closer to the truth. And that will solve the problems of the world, getting closer to the truth. So that's the truth. Ciao for now.